but the laborers. The laborers are indeed. Oh man, let me pull this up a little bit. But the laborers are few. For many are called, but few are chosen. Amen. Thank you again, Sister Corinne, for that beautiful rendition of My House is Full. And thank you, Elder Bull, for that beautiful uh, hymn of meditation as well. By God's grace, I shall not be before you long. Now, you know every preacher says that, right? I will not be before you long. And then, like, we're always, and I'm closing with this, right? I'm getting ready to close, y'all, and it be like another five five hours right but no I, I, I really just want to just put some stuff plant some stuff by God's grace in your spirit today the pastor gave us the thing that we are not lucky we are blessed but as he gave me that thing uh, I thought about this this theme is actually insurance versus assurance are you covered are you covered Assurance versus assurance. Are you covered? Every head bow, every high closed. Our Father and our God. Lord, we thank you for life, health, and strength, Lord. We thank you because you have a full house. And Lord, you have called us to be laborers in these last and evil days. Lord, let not our living be in vain. Like the psalm says, if I can help somebody as I travel along the way, then, then only then my living shall not be in vain. Lord, we need you to live through us, for you have the wonderful words of life. My words have no power. So, Lord, speak through me. Put your words in my mouth. In Jesus' name I pray. Thank God. Amen and amen. Insurance versus assurance, are you covered? Now, you know, a lot of times, you know, people us Americans will use insurance and assurance interchangeably. As a matter of fact, I remember growing up in high school, you know, me and my buddies, we used to say, blessed insurance, Geico is mine. <laughs> you know, just to be on being, you know, being funny. You know, but you know, as I've as I've gotten older, you know, the 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 Holy Spirit was like, what do you know the difference between insurance and blessed assurance? So I was like, okay. I was like, so I mean, let me go to what you know Webster or Oxford says, okay? Webster and Oxford says insurance uh, is a noun, and it means a practice or arrangement by which a company or a government agency provides a guarantee of compensation for specified loss or damage, illness or death in return for payment of a premium, payment of a premium, okay? So either there's insurance for everything. There's, there's a house insurance, there's car insurance, there, there's, 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 huh? Oh, thank you, thank you. See, look at that, look at that. So you have, so you have house insurance, there's car insurance, there's, there's what you call flood insurance, there's, there's, you know, I mean, name some, name some. Hurricane insurance, life insurance. Health insurance. What, I say what? Health insurance, employment or unemployment insurance. So if you get fired from your job, if you set up a plan, you can get, you know, even rich folk. Get this, get this. You know how rich folk buy houses? They, they get an insurance policy, right? And they take out on their own insurance policy. So that's how, that's how Jay-Z and Beyonce, they, they actually got their, their house of $200 million. What they did was they have an insurance policy and they take out the, the money off of their insurance policy. That way they have a mortgage and then they pay payments back to their insurance. So that's how they get a mortgage. Yeah, yeah, see, that, see that's what they don't tell you, you know? So, so you, have, you have a lot of insurances out there, right? And then, and then if, if something was to happen, then you would get compensation, right? I, I'm, I'm thinking about, again, being facetious here, I think about the comedian Chris Rock. He had a special years ago. He was talking about how insurance, now hopefully nobody sells insurance out here. If you do, I charge it to my head and I'm a heart. But, you know, his take on insurance is, is you know, it's, it's a scam. 
right? Because basically what you're doing is, is that you're telling the agency something's going to happen to me. This is basically what you're doing. You're, tell you're telling them, hey, something is going to happen to me. And they're telling you something is not going to happen to me. But if it does, I'll cover it to a certain extent, right? You're not right? And then, okay, right. And so you're paying them saying something's going to happen to me. Something's going to happen to them. They're saying, no, nothing's going to happen to you. Nothing's going to happen to you, right? And then when something does happen to you, you're like, see, I told you something's going to happen to me, right? It's like, okay, well, something does happen to you. Then what happens? You get paid, but what happens, though, with your payments? It go up, right? Because now the insurance company is telling you because the best predictor of future behavior is past behavior. Because something did happen to you, now your insurance goes up now because you're at a higher risk now, right? So it's all about risk management, okay? See, see ain't that something? Ain't that something? You ain't never thought of it like that, did you? you okay, all right, okay. All right, all right, but see, you laughing about uh, the bull, but you, you, you thought about it. Okay, but now, when you look at assurance, I like what assurance is. Assurance is... Uh, it's up there, but I'm going to read my definition. A positive declaration intended to give confidence, a promise, okay, or a word of honor, word or guarantee, a promise or a pledge, a vow, oath, a bond, affirmation, undertaking, commitment, troth, parole. Confidence or certainty in one's own ability. And if you look up here, it says a positive declaration tended to give confidence and a promise. Well, that's what it says. And a confidence or surety in one's own ability. All right. See, we, all, we, we here. We here, Sister. We here, Sister Corinne. All right. But I like that because, you know, a lot of times we, talk, we, t we tend to use them interchangeably. And I'm going to add one more in there. I'm going to add one more in there because you have insurance, I-N-S-U-R-A-N-C-E, but then you have insure, which is E-N-S-U-R-E. -E. And insure meaning is that I'm going to guarantee because I'm going to do it myself. And so that's what, that's what you call insure, all right? And then assurance is is something so let me read this so insurance is similar to insurance with the terms often used interchangeably however insurance covers refers to coverage over a limited time okay so you think of a warranty a warranty is a type of insurance right whenever you buy a product and then it says that you know there's a two-year limited or five-year limited warranty depending on you know what you what package you get you know like Apple Care whenever you get like a like an iPhone or something like that Apple Care will insure it up to one or two years and then after that you got to go buy a new device right because they're only covering it up until a certain amount of time whereas assurance applies to persistent coverage for extended periods or unto death. Insurance may also apply to validation services provided by accountants or other professionals. So when you look at the word assurance, assurance is actually found in the Bible. Insurance is not found in the Bible. Insurance is not found in the Bible, but assurance is found in the Bible. And I'm going to give you a couple of scriptures of where it's found in the Bible. Deuteronomy 28 and 66, it says, your life shall hang in doubt before you, you shall fear day and night and have no assurance of life. Okay? So this is in Deuteronomy 28 and 66. All right? This is basically uh, when uh, Moses is telling the children of Israel, you know, those different, like if you do the things that I tell you to do, that, that the Lord God tells you to do, bless you, so, bless, bless you so be in the fit, city, Blessed you shall be, shall, you shall be in the field. Blessed and when you come out, you know, like the Fred Hammond song, I'm blessed in the city. Yeah, look at that, be crazy. But you, you never heard that song before? I'm blessed in the field. I'm blessed when I come and when I go. We cast down every stronghold. Sickness and poverty must cease for the devil. So we are blessed. So basically, he's quoting what Deuteronomy was saying. All those blessings shall be applied to you because you are 
in the righteousness of Christ. You're doing what the Lord God had ordained you to do. But further down in that chapter, he says, if you don't do this, then cursed you shall be in the city, cursed you shall be in the field, cursed you shall be go, go out when you come in. You know, everything you do is going to be a curse, meaning you, you're not doing it for the Lord, right? Anything, you, if you're not doing what the Lord tells you to do, then it's all for naught. It's all going to pass away, right? And so later on in that chapter, he's saying your life shall hang in doubt before you because if you're not con connected to the life giver, you know, or the life sustainer, then you have no assurance of life then because you're no longer connected to the life giver. You know, it's as simple as that. If I cut off the source that's feeding me, then I can't eat, right? If I'm not listening to the wonderful words of life, then that means I'm closing my ear to God. If I close my ear to God, then the only thing that's left for me is darkness or death, right? Okay. Another instance in the Bible, in the Old Testament, uh, Isaiah 32 and 17, it says, the work of righteousness will be peace. The effect of righteousness, quietness, and assurance forever. So he's saying the effect of righteousness, the effect of right doing, okay, is quietness and assurance forever, all right? Then when you, when you skip on over to, well, before we go on to the New Testament, let's, let's look at that Old Testament word assurance. If you look at the Old Testament word assurance, assurance is actually, uh, uh, the, the, in, in the Hebrew, is amen. Yes, amen. That's what I said, amen. And amen is, it, it, that's right, it is so, Brother Velo, it is so. But the definition in the Strong's Concordance, it says that to take the right-hand road, to turn to the right, meaning to do what's right. Because often the right hand is the hand of authority. It is the hand, Sister Jones, of power, right? Jesus is sitting on the right hand of God, meaning all authority has been given to him, right? But also, all man is a primitive root properly to build up or support to foster as a parent or nurse, figuratively to render, to be firm or be firm or faithful, to trust or believe, to be permanent or quiet, morally to be true or certain. Once in Isaiah 30 and 21, by interchange uh, of, of um, the um, Hebrew 4, 541, which is, the, uh, which is to take the right hand or to turn to the right, to go to the right hand. Hence, assurance, believe, bring up, or establish. To be faithful, a long continuance, to be steadfast, to be sure, trusty, verified, or to nurse, or to be to father, or to put, to trust, to turn to the right. And, um, and Yamin, Okay, which is another form of it, is the right hand or side of a person or other object as a stronger or more dexterous, okay? So usually the right is the stronger side, the side that you can lean on, right? Locally, um, uh, it, it says here is the south or the left-handed or so, 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 so the other side, the south, is left-handed, right? But the right hand is, you know, the, the, the hand of power. Okay. Now, in uh, the New Testament, in the New Testament, we have a couple of instances where assurance is found in the New Testament. And the first one, first one is Acts 17 and 31. And it says, because he has appointed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he has ordained, he has given assurance of this to all by raising him up from the dead. So this is where Luke, the, the, the author of uh, Acts, is talking about the assurance that of, uh, of, of Christ that he's going to judge the world in the fact that 
the Lord raised him up from the dead. And he has given us the assurance, the fact that Christ is no longer dead. We serve a living God. So that's what we can rest on. That's what we can put our hope in, the fact that Christ is alive and he's sitting on the right hand of God. Colossians 2 and 2 say that their hearts may be encouraged, being knit together in love and attaining to all riches of the full assurance of understanding to the knowledge of the mystery of God, both of the Father and of Christ. So, in here, Paul is using the word insurance, full assurance of understanding, meaning that we can put all of our hope and all of our understanding in the fact that Christ has given us the, the knowledge of the mystery through the gospel, through the gospel. Because believe it or not, and we talked about this in Sabbath school, that the angels didn't understand the gospel of Jesus Christ or the gospel of the Lord. This is why in the sanctuary service, you see those two cherubims with their, with their wings outstretched and they're looking down at the, uh, at, the, uh, at the mercy seat because they're marveling. They were like, how in the world could a just God be merciful to sinners? That's really, that's really what's going on. They're like, how in the world? And then on top of that, Paul says in the New Testament that, that, the, that the gospel is being revealed to them through us. Ain't that something? That's why the Bible says that the angels are like, who is man that thou art mindful of them? For we are made a little lower than angels, but yet they are learning by us. Ain't that something? So that's the blessed assurance. The fact that he took something made of dust, made of dust. Now, think about it. Now, I, I like what Pastor Skeet says, you know, because uh, his favorite book is Genesis. And he says that, you know, when God made man, you know, he had a whole bunch of stuff to work with. Like, like gold was here, silver was here, diamonds were here. As a matter of fact, the greatest angel that was ever made was Lucifer. And he had all that stuff embedded in his personal being. And yet, his image wasn't in Lucifer. He put his image in dust. Ain't that something? Th yes, that's right. That's what I say. Thank you, Jesus. Out of all the materials that the Lord could have used, he took dust and water and breathed the breath of life on us and said, let, and said, let there be man. Right? And then he put his image and his likeness. Whoa, what a blessed assurance. Ain't that something? We can lean on that, y'all. 1 Thessalonians 1 and 5 says, For our gospel did not come to you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and in much assurance, as you know what kind of men were, were, we were among you for your sake. Here Paul is testifying that the word of God did not come only by mouth. They were living this thing, right? They were living it. You know, they were, they were living holy and acceptable unto God. Paul says in Romans through his, uh, through, through his buddy uh, Tortillus, because Tortillus actually wrote it, that, that was his you know, executive you know, assistant, you know, if you will, or secretary, if you will. And, 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 and in Romans, it actually says that, you know, we present our bodies a living sacrifice. You know, we don't just, a living sacrifice meaning that we are to live this thing out, okay? We're supposed to be living epistles read among men. And to be a living epistle is you got to practice before you preach. You don't just preach it first, then practice it. You got to live it first. And then you go and do it, right? Amen. So, um, Hebrews 6 and 11 says, And we desire that each one of you show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope until the end. So here, he's saying that uh, 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 we are supposed to run this race with patience. We're, this race is not a sprint, it's a marathon. It is given to those that can endure to the end. You know, I, you know, my mom was a track star, 
you know, growing up. I'm pretty sure that we got some other track stars in here, though. But uh, I, I was I was okay. I was I was more like a, a 400 you know meter runner though. But uh, you know, like it's you know the, the 400 is is a, is a is a race where you got to run around the whole thing. You can't start off fast, right? Because then because then you slow up right at the end, right? You got to pace yourself. But I even think about even like the like the 1600, the mile run. And, and, if, and if you ever go to like a relay race, when you see like the four by 16, that thing is a long race though. But you gotta pace yourself, you know? And then you see those runners, you know, and they're, they're going really, really fast, but they're really pacing themselves. And, and even back in those days, you had, the Bible says lay aside every weight which so easily besets you, right? You're not supposed to run with, now you train with a whole bunch of weights on you. But when, when yes, but when you run that race, you practically have practically nothing on you. And even back in the, in the ancient Greco-Roman world, they used to run naked. They used to run with nothing on because they didn't want nothing to hinder them to stretch their calf muscles, to stretch those calf muscles and those, and those, and those shins and those thighs and quadriceps. You know, they didn't want nothing holding them back, you know? So what the Lord is saying is that you're supposed to lay aside every weight and sin Anything that is hindering your walk and your run with God. And also Jesus says we strive. And I'm thinking about striding, you know. You know in order to keep that pace, you got to stride. Know your stride. Because my stride is not going to be like, 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 like brother stride or sister Aurelia's stride, you know. My stride is going to be different. My walk is going to be different. But for much is given, much is required, right? Like I, I think about... Christ and the talents, right? He gave, he gave one five, right, on the bull? And then he gave one, two, or three, and then he gave the other one one. So he's given them according to their abilities, right? So he's not expecting me to run Sister Hamlin's race. Sister Hamlin's race is personal, right? But what is the same is the assurance that if you stay in the Lord, you'll finish it. Amen? And then in Hebrews 10 and 22, it says, in Hebrews 10 and 22, it says, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from evil and evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. So when we have the assurance of God, you know, the Bible says sin has left the crimson stain, but he has washed us that we may be white as snow. Amen? Amen? And when they pierced him in his side, both blood and water came streaming down. Amen? So, so I'm, 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 I'm almost through. I'm almost through here. I'm not closing, but I'm almost through. Uh, uh, so I think of, uh, and, and so in the New Testament, assurance is play, uh, play ro, play rof or ria, play rof or ria. And that is entire confidence. So insurance, full assurance means entire confidence. We have this confidence in the fact that Christ insured us by coming and being our sacrifice of sin. Amen? And then also, um, that, that word, uh, play, play raffia, is actually a compound word. And, um, and I have a whole lot of words here, but I want to point this out. And it's a compound word comes from for Rio, which is, means to have a burden. That is, by analogy, to wear as clothing or a constant accompaniment. To bear or to wear. So in other words, shall I bear this cross by myself? Shall I bear these burdens alone? No. Because Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor are in heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Pastor Ivor Myers actually gave this beautiful analogy. He said that there was a man that was on his way to a wedding. And he, had, he was dressed to the nod, had a nice tux, it was a tuxedo, it was, it was pressed, steamed, crisp, had the white shirt with the black tie and everything, and on his way to the, to the wedding, his wedding actually, his wedding, and on his way to the wedding, he saw a homeless man 
that was filthy and dirty. And you know what he did? He stepped aside, took off his robe, and, get, and she said, hey man, give me your robe. I'll wear that and you wear this. And so basically what he's saying is, is that Christ, on his way to his, his, his coronation, stopped on the wayside and saw a wretched person like you and I and took off his garment of righteousness and put on our garments of sin and became sin for us. Ain't that something? Ain't that something? What blessed assurance Jesus is mine. Amen. Amen. So just a few, uh, um, now, now I thought about, you know, some of the slogans that some of the insurance folks say, like, you know, nationwide is on your side and stuff like that. But I'm here to tell you nationwide really ain't on your side. They really ain't on your side. Or, or all state stand. Are you in good hands? You're not in good hands with all state. You know what I'm saying? Because, but see, in all state, it says you are in good hands. But I'm here to tell you that you're in, if you're in Jesus, you are in good hands, right? Because John 10 and 27 says, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me and I give them eternal life and they shall never perish, neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. All right, my father, and then 10 and 29, it says, my father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of my father's hand. So when you're in the hand of Jesus, you're in the father's hand. And they used to play a game back in the ancient times where they would have something in their hand, like a piece of coin or something in their hands, and you, you would try to pry their fingers off and get what was in their hands. And Jesus is using that analogy. He's saying that if you're in my hand, no man can pluck you out. And then when you think of State Farm, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. I'm here to tell you, like a bad neighbor, State Farm don't care. They don't care. But, but I'm here to tell you that Luke 10 and 29 says with Jesus, but he wanting to justify himself, said to Jesus, who is my neighbor? Then Jesus answered and said, a certain man went down to Jerusalem, to Jericho, and fell among thieves who stripped him of his clothing and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance a certain priest came down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Okay, now this is supposed to be church folk, right? All right. Likewise, a Levite, okay, also church folk, when he arrived at the place, came and looked and passed by on the other side. Like a bad neighbor, State Farm don't care. I'm trying to tell you, like a bad neighbor, sometimes some church folk don't care. Oh, right, because the Bible says, skin for skin will a man give in exchange for his life. You know, I heard Pastor Skeet say one time, you know, doctors are borders. You have these secular doctors where the war is, they go to the war, right? Or the Red Cross, you know, where it's poverty, they'll go to that. Adventists sometimes, and I'm not, I'm not beating up on you, I'm just giving you all a fact though. You know, but Adventists, oh, go down to New Street. I know, it's too dangerous, too dangerous. Oh, go to Coverdale Crossroads, mm -mm, too dangerous. Whereas you got people who are doctors, will go where the bullets are flying, going, dragging people out, caring for them, while in, in danger of, of, of being blown up by suicide bombs. But they're, but they're out there, they're over there, working for the World Health, or health, World, ugh, excuse me, World Health Organization, you know? And we got Adra, yes, we got Adra, we got Adra, thank you, we got Adra, that's out there too, you know? That's the, where the bullets flying, where there's poverty, with their sickness and disease, they're out there, you know? So we thank God for Adra, amen? Amen, amen. But what Jesus is using here as far as the good neighbor, he's saying the neighbor is, is coming from a most unlikely source, a Samaritan. And actually, Jesus is actually calling himself the Samaritan, right? Because Samaritans were half-breeds, right? They were half-breed, you know, Jews. They were, they, they, they were, they were of the... They were of the Israelites, but then they had some Gentile blood mixed in them, right? Jesus, being the son of God, but put on man 
so that way he could come and minister to us. See, he said, the Son of Man didn't come to be ministered to, but he came to minister, right? And then the other one is liberty, mutual, right? Liberty, 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 you know. But I'm going to tell you, in Christ, yeah, John 8 and 32 says, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. They answered him, we are Abraham's descendants and have never been bondage to anyone. How can you say you will be made free? Jesus answered them, most assuredly I say to you, whoever commits sin is the slave of sin. And a slave does not abide in the house forever, but a son abides forever. Therefore, if the son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. And then Galatians says, Galatians 5 and 1 says, Steadfast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free, and do not be entangled again in the yoke of bondage. Meaning that if he has set you free, has made, excuse me, has made you free. Because somebody who is set free can be back into bondage, right? But if he makes you free, then that means that you are now designed to be free. All right? And you have to receive it. That's right, Sister Jones. You have to receive it. All right? And then uh, 2 Corinthians 3, 17 and 18 says, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. By we all with unveiled face, I mean, I'm sorry, but with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. And then last scripture that I have here is, blessed are those whose lawless deeds are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Saints, I'm here to tell you that you can get all the insurance you want. You can, get, you can get an insurance policy on yourself. You can get an insurance policy on your house, on your car. As a matter of fact, you know, in, in some states, they won't even let you own a car unless you have car insurance, you know. You can get insurance, fire insurance, you know. Even some people, some people try to get saved for fire insurance. Let that sink in, you know. Some people get saved for fire insurance. Because they don't want to burn up in that lake. But see, but see, they don't work like that. You know what I'm saying? They don't work like that. God wants to save you because he loves you. Because God is love. Amen? And, and, and insurance is all about okay, you're getting compensation for something that you've lost. Whereas assurance is God guaranteeing you because I gave all. You understand what I'm saying? So it's not about you getting something from him. It's the fact that he gave it all. Amen? Amen. So with that, I am closing. All right, because I'm, I'm, I'm trying to do better, y'all. I am closing. And now we're going to have our... Uh, we're going to have our uh, a song of, uh, yes, our closing song, amen, falling in love with, no, no, is that it? Yeah, falling in love with Jesus. And if this, I hope this sermon has helped you, if you are not falling in love with Jesus, fall in love with him. And if you are falling in love with him, get deeper in it, amen.